News alert, a curfew in Minnesota has ended this morning at 6 a.m. Central Time after a night rocked by violent protests following a police-involved shooting. Former NYPD officer and Fox News contributor Dan Bongino is here to react to it. Hey, Dan, what's your reaction? Hey, how are you? Good morning. Doing well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, listen, Ainsley, we have a process, right? This is what separates us from third world republics. You know, it's been said often that civilization's a thin crust on a volcano, right? Which, which is true, look at through, throughout the course of human history. Well, what's that thin crust comprised of? It's basically comprised of our police officers that keep law and order and that we all agree to live by a series of rules. Now, sometimes, unfortunately, use of force incidents by police against civilians break bad. Um, you know, I, I was a police officer. The overwhelming majority are good, kind, decent people there to do the right thing. Unfortunately, there are a few bad ones in there sprinkled in the bunch that can do a lot of damage. But, Ainsley, we have a process to weed them out. There are civilian complaint review boards. There's internal affairs. There's the legal system. If you happen to commit a crime as a police officer, you're not immune from that. Why we're ignoring this process, not we, but people involved here in this, in this unrest and just throwing it out. I mean, what, what, this is, if you want chaos and anarchy and you have no regard whatsoever for what that flag stands for, then this is the way to do it, by jumping to a conclusion before we have any of the facts. So this guy was evidently did not pull over, was trying to evade arrest, was on the phone with his mom. Uh, he ends up dead. We don't, know the, we don't know the ins and outs of it, but process at night, uh, make everyone who's uh, wearing the uniform even more nervous to do it or reluctant to put it on again while we try to deliberate well, and see what happened. And there are, cam there are body cams on this. We're going to get to the bottom of this, Dan. Yeah, but that, that, exactly. That's my point. What I, what I, I can't get in the head of people who do this type of thing. You have no idea right now what happened. You have a general template of something that went down. Doesn't, you know, it seems, tra I don't, I listen, I don't, I don't, no one should get shot, but unfortunately we have use of force incidents by police when people engage in behavior that has to be stopped. You pull a gun on a police officer, you can't just let them shoot the police officer. But can we get the facts first before we start looting? By, by the way, looting and destroying people's businesses, can you please explain to me in a coherent English sentence what that has to do with justice? How a third party who has nothing to do with anything, it's just running a business to get by through this pandemic. What the hell do they have to do with anything? How does stealing from them, how does that help anything? And how does that get to the bottom of justice? If the police officer was in the right and it was a use of force incident in the right, we'll find out. If they weren't, they'll be subjected to the same process we've had the whole time. Can everybody calm down and take it? Let's get, a, uh, you know, let's get our arms around the facts before we jump to conclusions and start stealing people's stuff from a store in the name of so-called, you know, air quotes, justice. Right. That's not justice. That's chaos. All right, uh, here, here now a case that we know, we absolutely know what happened. Uh, in 81, a guy kills a cop, and the cop's name is uh, Robert Walsh. Uh, the guy who killed him is a guy named Richard R Rivera, who wound up going to prison. But now, Governor Cuomo, in the wake of George Floyd, said we need to have a commission uh, to study police reform. And so they have appointed this guy, the cop killer, uh, to the commission. The family of Robert Walsh said to the New York Post this, our family is completely outraged and heartbroken that our father's killer, Richard Rivera, has not only been released, but was selected to be a part of the Ithaca and Tompkins County police reform plan. His appointment to this panel was absolutely disrespectful to our father's legacy and represents another painful tragedy for our family. Mr. Bongino? Listen, Steve, you know, I, I, I'm a proud believer in, in Jesus Christ. I am. I, you know, it's, I know it's not a religious show, but I am. And redemption, he forgave a man on the cross next to him. I asked, uh, you, know, you know, they'll see you in heaven, he said. Mm -hmm. But redemption, that's your issue with the Lord. Um, the, the fact that you put this guy on a panel, uh, a panel, well, I mean, uh, with this, they lost their family member. They are never going to see this person again. And you put the convicted person on, on a reform panel? 
I mean, listen, folks, come on. There's redemption, and then there's stupidity. I mean, this is a slap in the face. If you were looking to just stick it to these people, this is exactly what you would do. Again, if he wants forgiveness, let him pray on it. I'm sure Jesus will be there for you one day. But you don't put him on a police panel with the family. They, they, they will never, yeah. ever see their family member ever again. And now you stick it to him. This is a hot poker in the eye, if I've ever seen. Well, honestly, when I first saw this story, I thought it was some bad joke. Unfortunately, it's not. Yeah. Right. Dan Bongino, uh, thanks so much. Good point. I think Ithaca also voted to defund the police, so now you know where their mindset yeah. is. Dan Bongino, talk yeah. to you soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. More